Welcome everyone to episode 55 of the Circle Back Podcast, the show where three friends get together and just talk about video games. I'm Dan LaMarca. As always, I'm joined by Dan Dufernoy. Double nickels, baby. And Shelby White. <laughs> How you doing? And old double nickels Dufernoy over there. <laughs> had a exciting. great idea. Episode 55. Uh, we're going to do a something a little special here. Um, we are going to be ranking the Zelda games. Um, I was so, going to say, that was actually your idea, Dan. Don't give me credit for something Dan, I didn't do. stop listening to the curtain. I'm trying to give you credit here. <laughs> um, so we have a list here of all the main Zelda games, and this is what we're considering to be main games. We're not counting a lot of spinoffs, stuff like that, but we are counting things like uh, Phantom Hourglass, Spirit Tracks, Minish Cap, Four Swords, stuff like that. So, Wanda Gamelon? Definitely not that. No crossbow training. No CDI. No crossbow <laughs> training. <Go dongles. laughs> uh, so I'm going to read what we have chronologically here. Our goal is, much like we did with Mario games, uh, get it down to 10 and then order the 10. And this will be the Circle Back's official ranking of the best Zelda games. Uh, so I'm just going to read them in order. Um, we have The Legend of Zelda. We have Legend of Zelda 2, Adventure of Link. We have A Link to the Past, we have Link's Awakening, we have Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Oracle of Ages slash Seasons, I counted those as one, Four Swords Adventures, Wind Waker, Minish Cap, Twilight Princess, Phantom Hourglass, Spirit Tracks, Skyward Sword, Link Between Worlds, Triforce Heroes, and Breath of the Wild. So those are 17 of what we're considering the main Zelda games. I think a lot of people would say Four Swords isn't really included in that, but we're going to include it. Yeah, we'll throw it in there. Yeah, uh, maybe it's not going to make top 10, <laughs> but uh, at least it's here for the discussion. Um, so right off the bat, I think what we should do is just start making a couple cuts. Okay. Um, I think like I alluded to, Four Swords Adventures. Yeah. You know, we all know what it is. It's, it's a multiplayer kind of top down where you're kind of like one conglomerate, like spinning around and fighting guys. It's an interesting idea. It's not in a particularly it's a great link game. tornado. Yeah, <laughs> link tornado. Basically. <laughs> um, but yeah, would you guys agree that that's probably gonna I go? Agree. Uh, yeah. So, what do you guys think now about uh, Triforce Heroes? Yeah, I was gonna say. I think that's of the same vein. Mm -hmm. it, it's a very similar type of game. It's a little bit different. It's almost like a little bit like. Uh, New Super Mario Brothers, where like you can pick up the guys and like do certain platforming right. things, but it's not. And if I remember correctly, a team each sort of stuff. each member has like a special ability, right? There's yes. different yes. like elements or, or things yep. like that. So that's they're correct. all different colors: mm -hmm. green, red, blue. Yeah, RGB. That's how I think that's how it was with even the, the four, swords. four swords. But I, I think those two are the obvious weak links. Did a oh boy! <laughs> Didn't even mean to do it, and then I heard myself say it. His eyes just like bugged out. <laughs> He's um, like, "Oh no!" All right, so we got rid of those two real wow, quick. Wow, that was actually the easiest cuts we ever made ever on these oh, lists. For sure, yeah, for wow. sure. I mean, we had some of those in Mario too. You know that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, right. you know, but there's always a few. Now, even the even the easier ones on this are going to be a little bit tough because. We each have specific different tastes, mm -hmm. and I know that there are some Zelda games that I do not have much fondness for that some people do. Right. Um, so that's going to be interesting. But um, this list is not just going to be the 10 that were on main consoles or whatever. You know, it's, it's we're really it's trying to do, yeah. yeah, what are our spread 10 favorite, out. you know? And, and it's not just spread it out for spread it out sake, but, you know, I, I think... But I think it was going to happen that way anyway. Right. Uh, that's like, what I'm saying. So there are certain games like Dan loves Link's Awakening, right? I love Link's Awakening. Like Majora's he, he, Mask as well. Like I, I, I yeah. put those two up there as like. Yeah. I do as well. Yeah. So I'm saying those are excellent, excellent games. And even though that's what I'm trying to say is like Link's Awakening is a Game Boy game. And not a lot of people have played it compared to some of these other Zelda games. Mm -hmm. But I think that's, that's going to hang probably, you know, like it's going to go on the top 10 likely. Um, games that may not, and we can have a discussion about this. I think Adventure Link is not a top ten Zelda, Zelda game. Zelda two, yeah. Okay, so that's interesting, Dan, because I know that's a game that we've actually bonded over. Because uh -huh. everybody seems like uh, Nintendo at that time. 
I mean, and this is all retrospect too. If you look at you know Castlevania, Mario, Zelda, it seems like yeah, all the sequels, the original like the trilogies, like the sequels are always like yeah, the very, second like, one in the trilogy are always like completely out of left field. Yeah, and you can only say that like in hindsight because obviously you didn't know what time, to expect at the time. Yeah, but um, I like Zelda too. Me too, actually, and you know. For all of you that play uh, Super Smash Brothers, you know the uh, the temple theme in uh, Smash, like that came from Zelda 2. So I think there's a lot of stuff to love about Zelda 2, but I'm not saying we don't have to cut it right now. I know we have a fondness for it, but I'm I'm looking at the list and I'm like, uh, I think I could think of ten that are better. than Yeah, this. I don't think it'll definitely it definitely won't be top five. Um, right. But uh, Zelda 2, I think. I mean, Shelby, have you ever played Zelda 2? <clears throat> I have. I never finished Zelda 2, but I have played it. Um, because I remember the first one I ever played was Ocarina of Time. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I was like, well, that was dope. Let me go back and play the series from the beginning. I played the NES uh, Legend of Zelda, then tried Adventures of Link, and I was like, huh, mm-hmm. okay, <laughs> all right. It's also really hard. To go back and after is... Ocarina of Time? Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> and it's just a really hard game in general. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a diff- it's just... oh, difficulty-wise. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But both, both. Yeah. Like, it's, it's tough to return to <laughs> yeah. and look back on because it, it plays so strangely. Like yeah. where you go back to the original Legend of Zelda and it's just good. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. just, <laughs> it's a game. It's a really fucking good game today as yeah. if it were, you know, when it came out or not. Um, it's so, just, a- yeah, I don't know. I say let's leave it for now, but All I just right. wanted to bring it up as like a, it's on the top lower of the tier in this grouping. I agree. I but agree. you know, I think some of these, you know, we're looking at, let's say like F- Phantom Hourglass, Minish Cap, Oracle, Ages and Seasons. Like those games are all, we're kind of looking at them like them. yeah and, and they're not all the same at all like you know it, yeah we're saying like you know phantom hourglass with the ds you're like drawing on the map like Shelby was saying you had the boat mm-hmm. like in wind waker like there was a lot a lot of stuff to it and so. I, I really like the wind waker world so i enjoyed yeah, phantom hourglass a lot yeah you know? i yeah. love love wind waker because i remember writing down when i first played wind waker like literally writing on a, a notepad next to me going on like oh, all right well this is in this tile mm-hmm. like the on That's this the island and That's stuff like that yeah. mm-hmm. but then what the great thing about phantom hourglass was is that you could write it down literally mm-hmm. with, the, the with the pen screen. with the yeah, stylus yeah, yeah, yeah. on the screen so i was like this is awesome yeah do you think the phantom hourglass did wind waker better then no um wind waker was yeah. such a refreshing new start mm-hmm. uh in the series and the story was great and it was so expansive and everything like that whereas phantom hourglass was uh, an original ds game mm-hmm. and i don't think it was long enough um personally but i liked what it did it kind of took everything from wind waker that you kind of wish you could do um and improved little things here and there but not not enough right, to not make to it like a better game wind than wind waker was. not even close yeah uh but it was a good ds game all right, let's talk about Spirit Tracks quick. Um, I was a big fan of Spirit Tracks when it came out. I think this game is so unique and so awesome. Just like a, as a, wow, why would they, like, it's such a weird thing to do uh, for yeah. a Zelda Link game. Link in trains. And I like the way that Zelda herself is, like, a badass in yeah. that. Like, it's just a really good game. Talk about it for just a minute here, Shell. I just got to, I'll be right back. Yeah. So, Spirit Tracks, what I liked about Spirit Tracks after because what i did is i got a ds and i was like all right i need to play all the ds games that um zelda has because i I'd never had the system before so i played right through phantom hourglass and then before even finishing it bought spirit tracks and i was like all right i gotta play this game and i think what they kind of did is all that traversal you can do in the boats and stuff they were like all right well let's do it on land what are you gonna mm-hmm. do it on land with you're not gonna put link in a car that doesn't make any damn sense that would be pretty cool let's though. put him in a train like a maserati yeah right that would be <laughs> but like the way it, like uh, what was it bowser and mario was like yeah. always driving around like caddies and stuff like that but no what i liked about it was that like i, I like driving around um i never finished this game so i can't talk about its entirety yeah, no, but, no i know but yeah. it doesn't matter if you if you like the game you like the game yeah i mean um, I, I did i like how it was like kind of puzzly yeah like you're trying to like solve puzzles with the tracks and mm-hmm. stuff and i can't remember was it this or was it i think it was phantom hourglass where you shut the ds and open it up and it reprinted like what was on the front so oh my could, god like, i remember that and i don't remember a, which one of those man. it was i think it was spirit tracks i think it was yeah, spirit no. yeah. tracks it was just such a cool like because well that was the thing about Phantom, that was the solution because you, you gave literally. you the stylus to write with and then they thought of other things they could do in spirit tracks i believe it was i think it, i'm almost positive it was because when you shut it and it made like the 
this classic Zelda noise, like, yeah. And you're like, no, it worked. Like, it just worked. You know what I mean? That's really cool. It was so, so cool. Such a cool moment. Um, So I'm okay to leave that on for now. I think I might vote to take off Oracle of Ages and Seasons. So I I have a lot of, like, experience with those games, particularly. I think I told you before the Mm. show, I got it from Blockbuster, and I forgot to get it it back. Stole it from Blockbuster. So I'm the reason for... uh, (laughs) For them (laughs) failing? For Blockbuster closing down. It's all right. Captain Marvel brought it back. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But um, I really like those games, but I think in, you know, in comparison to games of that style, like, you know, Link's Awakening or, or Link to the Past, I just don't think it hangs... Yeah, um, it's in that same nice vein game. Of, yeah. of that game. It's, it's just a nice Zelda game. Yeah, it's a nice Zelda game. I mean, more of Link to the Past is great, right? But, I'll take it. Yeah, nobody, but, nobody will complain about it, but it doesn't quite have the same, like, punches. Yeah. As, so, I mean, you know what? Even, look, they're not, because there is differences in each game, but not enough significant differences other than, I think, it's the main characters you meet like yeah. a you mean like a, a witch in one and then you meet like a warlock in the other yeah something like that it's there's like two different ladies and i just i yeah. know depending on I, I don't forget which one i played but yeah, i think right. it was seasons yeah yeah um, i think we could take it off compared to the rest of these you know the, the the real interesting part of this list that we're going to make here is when we do get it down to 10 games and then we have to order them i think that's where this is really going to come in yeah. like getting it down to 10 right now I, there aren't going to be too many like real real hard cuts mm-hmm. i don't think um, but I think the ordering is going to be going to be interesting. So right now we have one, two, three. We're up to fifteen, right? Okay. So we're going to cut two. One, two. So we got Legend of Zelda, Adventure Link, Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, Ocarina, Majora, Wind Waker, Minish Cap, Twilight Princess, Phantom Hourglass, Spirit Track, Skyward Sword, Link Between Worlds, Breath of the Wild. We have fourteen. Okay, we have 14. So we got to get rid of four of these. I don't know why. I was never, other than Link's Awakening, I was never very crazy about... The, do you, is there any out of, like, Minish Cap or... Um, well, I'm sorry. I didn't even finish what I was saying. I was never very crazy about, <laughs> like, the Game Boy uh, yeah, so I, Link I, game. The one thing Zelda I'll games. say, and I'm not saying we cut all the other ones, but Link Between Worlds is a top 10 Zelda game. I know, that's what, I, no, no doubt. Oh, for sure. I've actually no doubt. never... I, this is a dent in my armor. I've actually never no, played yeah, a Link gotta, Between Worlds. Yeah, you that really got to get on incredible. that. incredible. But yeah, I, totally, I totally understand. But I just mean, yeah. you know, same. you said, you know, more of the same. I feel like Phantom Hourglass is more of Phantom Hourglass and Minish Cap, you can talk Minish about. But they had interesting, like, little wrinkles but you're right it is more of the same but was the gimmick enough to keep it in a like or was it just good enough you know what i mean like yeah. that's the thing it does it, more of the same could be better than no, that's, a game that that's i'm not true. hugely like me personally twilight princess i not, do, not a fan i agree I'm, I'm with you on that but i i do believe i would put a top 10 though even if it's 10 i, f- I feel like it did same sort of thing it did enough it, it kept me intrigued enough but there's so much that i just hate about it yeah. i yeah. hate the wolf stuff i i, I agree i hate don't it. like the wolf stuff it, you know I, i'm not saying we got it right now but i am saying like if it's in that top 10 I, like do would i rather like right 10. now would i rather play minish cap or twilight princess i'd rather minish play cap. Minish cap. yeah yeah you it's know true. what i mean like, all right so like, all right let's get into the degree let's talk about twilight princess then yeah yeah i mean because i, I want i'm not a twilight princess of uh you know apologist i'm not i'm not like oh you know this well this some people love so this great. game and there are certain dungeons that are like really smartly done it's the same thing with skyward sword in my opinion those two games i mean they're very different but mm-hmm. they're similar in the way of like i can pick out things that i'm like oh that's fucking awesome yeah, like yeah, this yeah. is a really great dungeon really smart puzzle mechanics like whatever but and the games as a so whole much, yeah. yeah i'm like overall as a whole package i'm like I don't really. That's not one of the better Zelda games. Like I would never say that about. I definitely Wind liked, Waker uh, or oh yeah or Ocarina or Majora. Yeah, that's you know what I mean. mean. There's games that we haven't even touched yet, um, and that's because I I know you guys, and I, I also know I know my personal feelings. I know what our top five is gonna look like. Like I know at least I know what games yeah, are gonna probably, be yeah. in there. Well, we were just talking about Twilight and Sky. I like Skyward more than I like Princess. Yeah. Um, and I remember what we were talking about this earlier. I bought Princess for GameCube because I was like, well, I want to playing a normal controller i don't want this wii stuff going Mm -hmm. on you know Mm -hmm. um and then you play the game and you're like this is a very very odd zelda game right from the get-go like Mm -hmm. before you even become the wolf you're like all right this is a little different you see what they're going for it's a little more realistic but still at the same time very Mm -hmm. cartoonish um and it was good you get through it it's not bad Mm -hmm. um 
but I definitely like Skyward a lot more. Yeah. I just feel I, like they were trying to go for something like dark and edgy, but it yeah, just it, it was Yeah. I, and I hate the whole principle of it, right? Yeah. Even at the time, I was like, whoever didn't like Wind Waker, you're an asshole. <laughs> like, I don't want to hear. Well, that's what it was. You People know what I'm were saying? upset about Wind Waker. And that's why they oh, pivoted make to this, this. Dark and brooding. Yeah. Oh, dark, is that the reason? Dark, yeah. dark shaded. Uh, People and... didn't like Wind Waker because it was too you... cartoonish. <sighs> and that's like pathetic. Like, that is such a sad, sad reason to not like that's a game. That's ridiculous. Wind Waker is. It's amazing. Fantastic. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I've I've always like it's always been lower on my on my in my head just based on principle because I'm like oh, I just don't like the whole idea that they gave in to the jerks that, yeah. that were like we want a realistic Zelda. Yeah. Well, uh, now you were saying before about being able to pick from those two games stuff that you do like. We mm-hmm. we know we don't like them. But what yeah. is there something you do like personally for Twilight Princess? There were a few far between, but the um that like dead night guy that would teach you secret moves. Mm-hmm. I like those. I thought those were pretty cool. That's really cool. That's you know? what I'm saying. There is really cool stuff. I like Minna herself as a character. I think it's really really cool. Yeah. I think the character design. I think her attitude and stuff. Yeah. I, think I really like her. It's just it just didn't do it for me. Well, yeah. the, the whole tone didn't do it. You know. Well, do you guys know the the whole lore behind that Stalfos that teaches you that stuff? No. That's. Apparently, that's the young Link from Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? He died in the Lost Woods, yeah. became a Stalfos, and now he's teaching this generation of Link. Yeah, all the oh, cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's cool stuff. The whole Zelda timeline kind of, <laughs> kind oh, of yeah, thing for, Zelda timeline. for you purists. That's something else. Well, I mean, there. the moment, the, the 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 best part of the Zelda timeline. There's two I think on here that are like really up there. And Wind Waker, when you go to that underwater temple. Right. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's like an all time moment where mm-hmm. it's like, okay, like I usually don't give a shit about yeah. your about your Zelda timeline, but that's actually <laughs> yeah, really, yeah. really cool. Um, yeah. I agree though. I think Twilight Princess is a is a weaker game. Um yeah. you know, same sort of thing. I loved Wind Waker. But mm-hmm. uh, but even just on its own, even forget, you know, Wind Waker or forget the, the graphics of Twilight yeah, Princess. That's what I'm saying. I yeah. just think the story was just very okay, all right, there's a Twilight Realm, and then okay. Ganon came back, and then, okay, there's yeah. this, there's that, you know. I, I don't think, honestly, talking about the moments, I don't even think I had a moment in Twilight Princess that I was like, oh, my god. There were gosh. certain dungeons, especially later in the game, like the last couple of dungeons, I remember specifically being like, yeah. oh, wow, this is really neat. Mm-hmm. Like certain, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I say it could go because all right, I'm fine. we have I, a bunch I, of really good I, That's what I mean. I'm, I was just looking at the list. and My yeah. Twilight yeah. Princess. If we yeah. have to cut four before we even make it to the top ten. That's what I'm saying. Twilight Princess. My Twilight All right. is going. Twilight Princess is gone. You know how mad Ralph's going to be? Oh, so mad. <laughs> oh, I, I, did, I did enjoy <laughs> some stuff from it. Like the, uh, I think the horseback combat uh, mm. was a little bit improved from some of the previous games, but it just wasn't enough story-wise right. to uh, keep us there. All right. So Twilight Princess is gone. Wow. Bye-bye. Um... So we'll 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 wrap back around and talk about Minish Cap, Phantom Hourglass, Spirit Tracks. They're all three in a row on this list right now, with um, the same style link. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but I, you know, Spirit Tracks is obviously the different one. Yeah, I think Minish Cap and Phantom Hourglass play very similarly. Yeah, Phantom Hourglass opens it up a little bit more. Uh, I think Minish Cap is a little bit closer to like a Link to the Past style thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you guys have preferences on these or if you have a specific one that you want to be championing. Um, I'm looking at, we need three gone. Um, I'm not saying all three of those go, but I, I think, I think two of them have to go because I'm looking at the rest. I don't know what else we're going to knock off. If you look at, if the, we're keeping adventure link, I don't think. So I'm fine. Come, come at me about venture. Link. It's not that I'm again, not that I'm particularly the biggest fan of that game. I just, I do, I do enjoy it. And I think it gets, uh, you know, a yeah, lot but of I agree with you. Early. I agree with you a hundred percent because I'm just. I'm that person that was the same way where I'm like, I like when they try unique and different weird ass mm-hmm. stuff. But seriously, if you go back and you play Legend of Zelda, Adventure of Link, and Link to the Past, those are the first three Zelda games. Right. It is very clear that Adventure of Link is a much weaker game. One of these things yeah. is yeah. not like the other. Yeah. And it's not that they have to be the exact same style of game because, you know, we'll talk about Breath of the Wild and Majora and Wind Waker and everything. Mm-hmm. I don't need it to be the same, but it it's it it's level of quality compared to those other two, it's clear. Do you think it's it's lower than Phantom Hourglass, Minish Cap, Spirit Tracks? I mean, th- again, now we get into personal preference because yeah, no... I was just, on a personal level, yes, but I would assume for you, probably not. 
True. You know? I don't know. I, I guess, but also I spent more time with, with Zelda too. I don't know. There's something about that. I like that. You know, the sh- nostalgic. Feel yeah, yeah. Shadow Link was in it, and I just I like those moments. There's so much the, cool stuff. There's yeah. some really good moments. Yeah. In, in Zelda, the 2. the music and the the um like the sound mm-hmm. stuff. Like when you when there there are certain sounds in that that are just like creepy yeah, and yeah. weird. You know. And I'm totally fine with like it's obtuse. Like you know the same sort of way that and, you know Castlevania Two Simon's Quest where you had to find the blue crystal and like. For a lot of people, that's, you know, I keep not finishing my sentences. You have to find the blue crystal to, like, get to a certain place and kneel in a certain mm-hmm. area and get to another. Yeah, it's a classic you know, Simon's Quest area, thing you know, and, like, Zelda has on this block. so many of those moments where you got to do these weird things in order yeah. to, like, progress. And for a lot of people, that's very frustrating. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, like, I've played enough Resident Evil and enough, you mm-hmm. know, of, of those sort mm-hmm. of games, or Metal Gear, where, like. Yeah, when you figure that stuff out, though, that's, like. You're, like. <laughs> First, you're like, what the hell? Like, why? Why is that a thing? But secondly, like, I like that. I like yeah, yeah, really yeah. having to immerse yourself. No, I agree. Um, but having said that, again, I'm not holding it to. Oh my gosh, it's got to be top ten. Mm. I just wanted to give it some love, and you know. Right. So if we are cutting Zelda two, I'm not hurt by that. I'm not saying we have to, but I think I th- I really truly think that those are the four that we're talking about. We're talking about Adventure of Link, Minish Cap, Phantom Hourglass, Spirit Tracks. Those are the weak links. Yeah, I, oh, would- I said it again. I too would throw Skyward Sword in there, but I know Shelby's a big fan of Skyward Sword. So I do like Skyward Sword. I think Sword it's got to be ten, top ten. Okay, but I think, yeah, I think we're talking about getting rid of three of those four. That's why I'm saying so. You know, Zelda two not definitely gone, but let's have a discussion between those four. Okay, out of those three Game Boy Advance games, I feel yeah. like I know I've never played Spirit Tracks. I know how you guys feel about it, but between Minish Cap and Fem Hourglass, I feel like Minish Cap's the weaker of of the three i like the premise i like the whole you wear the minish cap you get smaller mm-hmm. you go to this whole new area i think it's charming i think it's cute um again more link to the past mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that um but i'd say that that's the week so more one. of a redundancy more redundancy in, but not in a bad way not even yeah. in a it, we're talking about zelda games so even yeah, the worst yeah, zelda yeah, game yeah, is yeah. Like, like you know better than 90 percent of the other stuff i hear you there i mean i don't know how you guys feel yeah minish cap for me is the one out of the three that i like the most oh okay mm-hmm. but I didn't really remember much about Phantom Hourglass, so it, it's hard for me to be like, you know, I haven't touched it since it came out. I, I've played Minish Cap, you know, maybe five years ago, something mm-hmm. like that. So I at least have some sort of memory of it. Um, and Spirit Tracks, I remember pretty well. Um, and what do you guys think? What's your opinions? It's, that's a tough one. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I really liked all three of those games. Yeah, they're great. You know, I, I would lean towards, I mean, I would admit, because I liked I liked Phantom Hourglass a lot, but I really like Spirit Tracks a lot too. Yeah. So if we, if it's between those two, because I know Dan really like it, likes Minish Cap. Yeah. I would take Phantom Hourglass off. All yeah. right. Although I do really love w- what it did with um, the boat exploration and everything, and being yeah. able to write it down. And the drawing the of the map. Like, yeah. It was so convenient. It's it was neat. so much yeah. fun. You know. It's really neat. All right. So we'll take off Phantom Hourglass. Okay. Now we are down to twelve. Got to get rid of two. Is that right? Yes. Mm-hmm. So we have Zelda 2, Minish Cap, Spirit Tracks. Personally, I'm keeping Minish Cap, Spirit Tracks. But if, no, uh, no, again, no. I'm if not, you want to. Again, I'm not particularly, you know, holding Zelda 2 yeah. to this. You but know. It, like I said before, I didn't even, I didn't start with Legend of Zelda and then go to Adventures and like mm. experience that yeah. big change up. I started at Ocarina of Time. So that's a big difference for me. So I feel well, like I I'm did, impartial. Actually, I, I think a little, my, you know, my like, first I think two. most of us did. But I had an NES like when I was very young and I, I, but I do remember playing, like I played the original Legend of Zelda first probably, but I probably didn't play Zelda 2 until after I played Ocarina. So okay. it's hard to yeah, say yeah. exactly. I'm um, okay taking Zelda 2 off. I just, I think, I think it should get a little bit of a, I just wanted to give it a little I bit of a I think it, listen, like we said, almost every single Zelda game has those it's a Zelda pickums, game. you yeah. know, like it's it's got those. Wow, that was pretty cool. Yeah, you know, like I it's like a that a lot. Yeah, we're talking um, about a great franchise here. Maybe uh, yeah, right. The greatest franchise. And I think we did the same thing with uh, Mario. With yeah. Mario, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Right. Personally, so, let's get rid goes. of let's get rid of Zelda two. All right. And then we still have to get rid of one of those other ones. But let, let's look through the list now. I just want to make sure I have my count right. We have Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past, Link's Awakening. Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Wind Waker, Minish Cap, Spear Tracks, Skyward Sword, Link Between Worlds, and Breath of the Wild. It's 11. Okay. So we do have to get rid of one more. 
before we get rid of either Minish or Spirit Tracks, do we want to revisit any of these? Are there any that you think are on the chopping block out of that list? <laughs> That's the no, thing. it's between I, those I, two personally. Yeah, I really I, I agree. think everything else ordering them is going to be hard, but yeah. I ordering them is going to be very hard. But it's okay. funny because it's like as you're reading those off, I was like, "Well, that's got to stay. That's got to yeah, stay. That's, that's, that's got to stay." I just exactly said, it. "I just said that eleven times in a row." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Minish Cap or Spirit Tracks? Minish Cap or Spirit Tracks? I I like how unique Spirit Tracks is, and I think it was really really smart in some of the stuff it did. Also, one of the best soundtracks out of any of these, like mm. Spirit Tracks music, is like ingrained in my brain just from playing it so much, but. You mean the choo choo that one? Uh, yeah, that one. Yeah, yep. the Thomas the Train Engine sounds. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but I really do have a fondness for Minish Cap. I don't know. Okay. I don't know what you guys are thinking. I mean, I'm I'm totally fine with either. Whichever of one of these, these, two, the, know, these like, are going to be number ten. 10 yeah, whatever. whatever, whatever they were both about. different enough from each other to where I could be like, oh yeah, this makes this one better, or this makes this one better. You know. Right. Um. So whichever I think majority here. Majority. I never played Spirit team. Tracks. <laughs> 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 um, but I don't know. All right, I also I enjoy Minish Cap. I don't want to. I know something before how like I was yeah, gonna cut yeah. it. It's again. It's not. It's a Zelda game, so it's not like I'm like, oh, this yeah. game's the best or this game's the worst. I I've ha- I've enjoyed every experience I've had with a Zelda game hmm. except Twilight Princess. But other than that, everything is just like <laughs> it's, not, it's Twilight Princess, the sour, uh, Super Mario Sunshine of this. Uh, yeah, pretty much <laughs> for me. It is. You know, and that's the thing with Mario Sunshine. I enjoyed it at first. No, I loved and then, Mario Sunshine uh, at first, and then when you really sit down and think about it, and you're like. Oh yeah. So that's Twilight Princess. I think when I played it the first time, I was like, "This is so cool! I'm using the Wii Remote, and oh, I'm actually it was the coolest thing." And yeah, then, yeah. looking back, I was like, "Uh huh." Uh-huh. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. But also, these games are at such a high caliber that the moments I've had with other Zelda games, where it's just so incredible, yeah. this one sticks out like a sore thumb. Yeah. So I yeah. agree. So Minish Cap number ten. All right. We get rid of Spirit Tracks. And now we got nine. And then, uh, yes. yeah, I guess. Order. So I'll obviously. move this. We're gonna. I'm, I'm just gonna make a. I'm gonna throw some numbers here, and we can just. Actually, I'm not gonna throw numbers. I'm just gonna change this order here. Um. So right now, I'm just gonna read the ten as they are. They're obviously not in order, but. Um. I, I have the Legend of Zelda for the NES, Link to the Past, Super Nintendo, Link's Awakening, Game Boy, Ocarina of Time, Nintendo 64, Majora's Mask, Nintendo 64. Wind Waker GameCube, Skyward Sword for Wii, Link Between Worlds for 3DS, Breath of the Wild for Wii U and Switch, and Minish Cap for the Game Boy Advance. So, we got a pretty good spread, actually, throughout the, you know, we have a Switch game and a, and, and an NES game, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but now we're going to start ordering, and this is where it's going to get interesting. Um, we already said Minish Cap, we're going to put it 10. I personally think we basically need to say what are the bottom tier games here. Skyward Sword. Skyward Sword. I, I think. would. I would say, yeah. Looking at this, it's definitely. I love Skyward Sword. Like I said before, it's definitely a bottom tier. I'd. I'd, I'd have no problem putting it at nine. So tell me some of the the things yeah. about Skyward Sword. So, so what I liked about it was that like. Uh, it was the first one that I played on Wii. Like you guys are saying, you played Twilight Princess on mm-hmm. Wii. It was mm-hmm. the first one I played on Wii, and I felt like the controls were actually adapt it like it it worked for me at least i know like you raise your thing uh the sword up yeah, in the air you get that superpower stuff i thought i thought that was cool i thought it was cool that uh you could run um mm-hmm. uh, even though you need that little energy fruit but you could run around which added a different puzzle aspect to some stuff you know mm-hmm. um in order to get there quick enough you had different moves and stuff like i said you raise the sword up and then you could jump on balls. You use that as kind of like a gyroscope thing. I thought that the the uniqueness of now using the Wii controls in a better way uh, was what I liked a lot about okay. it. Um, but what do you guys think? Yeah, you know, and I, I liked it. I like some of the char- I think the characters for me were yes, some of the best. I agree. That's what I was going to say. Some Legends really, the really fun, yeah, interesting characters. Like I love Gearham. I think that guy's yeah. Oh, and flying around guy's was, a weirdo. Was freaking cool too. <laughs> guy's you know? a total weirdo. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, flying around, yeah, actually jumping, like finding Beetle in like odd spots and stuff like oh, that. I mean, it was thank a, you. <laughs> similar to Wind Waker, where you went to go explore these little islands, islands um, floating in the sky. I thought that was cool. Yeah. Um, no, but yeah, definitely. I think there, it was, it was, it took. I think all the again, all the criticisms that people have for Twilight Princess. I think it really tweaked that. 
Um, I love the aesthetic. I, again, the characters are a little bit more upbeat, a little bit more, you know, kind of funny. Like you said, Beetle mm. uh, makes an appearance and stuff like that. And, and you know, people like Gear Him and things like that. I, I really, really enjoyed that. Those were really, really good characters. Um, it just but as dragged overall, on, in yeah. my opinion, more than most Zelda games where yeah. it felt like you, all right, get these whatever three or five or whatever and then you bring them and then it's like all right now you need to get three of these like yeah. i just felt like it kept going and mm-hmm. going one thing i ha- i hated the giant monster thing that you had to chop off his toes and stuff oh yeah that was horrible and you had to do it like three times yeah like that that to me sucked i hated doing that um but the fight at the end with ganon was pretty cool i i liked the the whole forest too when it filled up with water afterwards and you were mm-hmm. like now exploring it that way that was pretty cool that was neat but yeah, that that boss fight thing where you chop the toes off that I giant know. beast was the worst. So frustrating. Um, but yeah, the, like I said, I mean, what are we talking about? Good things, bad things, like every other. Yeah, it's a Zelda game. Else. It's already but yeah, a good yeah, company. No problem putting that at number nine. Okay, yeah. it doesn't have to be locked in there, but we'll at least say it's near. It's in the bottom area. Yeah, because like I said, it's it's about to get real tough because we're talking about what else mm-hmm. is a lower tier. I, I I don't know. All, all I can't the, really. All the tell next you. eight games could be number one on a game. Yeah, it's kind of scary. <laughs> um, <laughs> the only reason I'd say Link Between Worlds is below a lot of these other ones, I would say Link's Awakening and Link Between Worlds are like on the lower tier. Okay. Just because I'm looking at like original Zelda top tier. That game's amazing. Link to the Past. Right. Yeah. Top tier. Ocarina, Majora, Wind Waker, Breath of the Wild, like, and these are some of the best games for their respective consoles, which is like crazy. Yeah. Like, they're like maybe oh, the yeah. best games for oh, yeah. those consoles. That's Easily. what I'm talking about. These are this is a I think Legend of Zelda franchise. is the best game on NES. Yeah. I I really believe that. Hmm. I really more than Mario Three. Interesting. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's, it's. Those are the two, in my opinion, mm-hmm. that that could fight for that. What I loved about the re- original is that people year decades after would go back and be like. Holy shit! There was a secret passage over here. You know, like <laughs> that's, that's it, incredible. It's just such a genius level of game design mm-hmm. where it's just like everything's open to you. You get certain, just like, go. It just you can do the dungeons in certain different orders. Just like, go. Nothing. It's just such a unique experience, especially for the time. Can you imagine playing that like the first time, like when it came out? Oh, like God. I'm sure people's minds were just blown just yeah, like you know what i mean crazy. like even playing it now there's just so many ins and outs and secrets and like all right you get past the graphics whatever but like seriously it's it's incredible it's so fucking and everything good. that we you know we know now about it is open worlds and everything is just that's it that's started that's but it is still so originated. good today it mm-hmm. really yeah. is like i i played this game a year ago just as like a refresher and it's just so so it's awesome. good like it is just such a great game so, so that, we were talking about the so i'm basically saying as much as I love these games, Link Between Worlds and Link's Awakening, I think are probably the only other two that I would say are lower tier. bottom five. Lower echelon, yeah. yeah. Now, I, I've i never played Link Between Worlds, and I know I, I have to. Yes, you have to. You do have to. I love Link's Awakening. Yeah. Link's I, Awakening I, is fantastic. I think when it comes to, to story... Um, that that whole I mean we can spoil right I mean it's a how old it's like a twenty eight year old well game. I wouldn't spoil it actually because we Link are Between getting that Worlds remake. was oh we that's are, right the, the we are getting coming that up remake. pretty right. soon Link's Awakening is getting that remake yeah all right so I don't want to spoil anything but seriously that's that story is one of the best I, I mean we're talking about if we're really ranking these we got to spoil it but we'll just give a good warning and say okay we're about to spoil a game Link's whose Awakening. story is coming out yeah yeah we're getting a remake so if you never played the original on game boy then whatever but go ahead then okay spoilers very much in the same vein of shadow of the colossus like the entire time the entire time you think you're on this noble quest you're doing this you know you're getting all these instruments you're gonna save the world mm-hmm. But you ultimately are the one that like destroys the world. Like yeah. everything that you're doing is it's just is making everything worse. And exactly, and being a kid and and like playing that, and then being like, and it ending that way where you're just like, wait a second, all that time I put in, like I, that completely like blew my mind. It was like a really big precursor, like a Majora's Mask, where like oh absolutely, yeah. you just feel so like depressed mm-hmm. and then like oh my gosh like you know it was a very one of the sad boys all those it's a very nihilistic uh, concept but yeah. like it was just it was just fantastic and like for a game to take that sort of risk and the fact that you're so it's very dreamlike right mm-hmm. and everything's weird and certain things don't make sense you have like mario yeah, characters in here and yeah like stuff 
it's just such a unique thing. I I adore this game. I I could definitely see it being top five. I I just it it's very hard when you're looking at these compared to some of this other stuff. And and we can have that discussion. I'm not putting it in the bottom tier. I will put Link Between Worlds down there just for now. I know Dan, you haven't played it, but mm-hmm. Link Between Worlds I think is like a fantastic, fantastic game. But it is hard when we're just looking at these mm-hmm. these things right now and. You know, like I said, aside for me personally, aside from Skyward and Minish Cap, like these eight oh. in particular are like just such incredible games that it's just like so hard to to say like one's better than the other. But I think Link Between the Link Between Worlds plays off of the other games in such an interesting way. It's particularly Link to the Past. Yeah, it plays with it a lot. It, it's like t- telling a similar story, and then all of a sudden things change, like the way they do the 3d aspect where you like go into the walls and stuff like it, it does so much interesting stuff and I love it for it. But I think when we're looking at the rest of these, I, I could see it near the bottom. Do you think uh, so? All right. So do you think links to the past? I'm sorry. Uh, Link between, between worlds. worlds is, does it superior than links awakening or for me personally, I would say no, just because links awakening is such a special, like strange thing, mm-hmm. but I'm just saying, I'm just justifying why I'm willing to put it in the bottom area okay. with with Skyward and Minish. And now that we're talking about Link's Awakening, I'm like, well, it, does that belong down there? I don't know. Like, that's what that's what I'm basically trying okay. to say. So what do I don't know if you agree with me, Chell, that Link Between Worlds could be... Uh, uh, like, I love this game, but... I love the game. If, I'm tr- if we're talking about those two, which now Link's Awakening obviously doesn't have to go down there, you know? Like, if we're talking between those two, Link's Awakening story... It, far super uh surpasses the one uh from a link, link between worlds. worlds i just i like the gameplay a little bit better but that mm-hmm. also comes with a game that came out yeah 15 years after you know yeah, like literally yeah. yeah um so i i do think link's awakening is a better game yeah um but you gotta play link between worlds i know dude. yeah i know so I'll put that freaking on my, good. yeah, yeah, yeah. Really i'll put that on the list for sure uh, and i've heard so much about it when it came out everybody was you know oh, you gotta yeah, 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 it was yeah, so yeah, good. It's yeah. excellent. Yeah. yeah, it's absolutely so. Uh, but it is like I'm, I'm like sitting here in silence almost because I'm staring at this list. Like, what the hell are we gonna do here? Yeah, um, I know. So, so, so if we're looking right at now? if we're looking at the top seven, we're saying let's just say we have Minish Cap ten, Skyward Sword nine, Link Between Worlds eight. Let's just say. Okay. Then we have Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Wind Waker, and Breath of the Wild. The problem with this, if I was about to make a you know top fifty of my favorite games of all time, each of these seven would be on, <laughs> on this. No list, joke, dude. You know? Like, but, but but that's the issue that I mean, you know, we're we're undertaking this as a part of like this is all arbitrary. It's just for fun to we're say doing like this for the fans. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's really just for just for fun to say like you know what's what's our top ten right. Zelda games like whatever. Like all these games are fantastic. Obviously, mm-hmm. that goes without saying, but we're i don't know i'm just having a tough time distinguishing between them and saying which one is better because i know which ones are my favorites personally but when we're talking about them all out right now i'm like well how am i gonna say that you know this one's better than that right. or whatever yeah so i don't know do you guys have any thoughts about what can what can be pushed down maybe around seven six something like that or are you i kind of want to look at i think looking at this list there's Four games in particular grouped into twos that I would say between the NES and SNES, between those two games, which would we choose? And then the two N64 games, between those two games, how do we feel? All right, that's yeah. interesting. You know? Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, like in, if, if I'm looking at the N64 ones right now, I know, Mr. Dufinoy, you are a Majora's Mask fan. All the way. Through I and through. Die hard. Like, that's, yeah. that, like, top three games yeah. ever. Um, personally... I like the Ocarina of Time a little bit more, but okay. I like the puzzling and how much, on an intellectual level, how much more difficult I felt Majora's Mask was mm-hmm. for me because it's like everything changes about. It's not like go yeah. to this area and that's it, figure it out. It's like no, you can in the in the town itself had so many things you could do mm-hmm. again and again and again and again because of the the, the time shift stuff and then just. Finding all, I'm a collectathon person, so well, collecting whole game all those is, masks yeah, and stuff, you know, like just side quests. It's just incredible, and then working as hard as you can to get those extra masks that change you into different characters. Mm-hmm. It's like I think Majora's Mask is an absolutely incredible game, and 
so is Ocarina of Time. I like Ocarina of Time a little bit better. I know yeah. I just praise the Majora's thing, Mask to the uh No, the I hear what you're saying, though. I mean, they're both excellent, obviously. A lot of yeah. people... So Ocarina came out. Everyone was saying this is the best game of all time. Like, loving, 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 loving this game. Majora came out, and everyone was like, this isn't the sequel to Ocarina that right. I want. And people were upset. But when you look at it on its own as a standalone Zelda game, obviously, you don't have Majora without Ocarina. Mm -hmm. Obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if you just take this game as a, hey, this is a Zelda game, try it. I, I personally think it's a better game than Ocarina of Time. Because it has, like, and there's different criteria of what we're gauging this on. But as a, like, it is just so unique. Mm -hmm. And it has so many, like, interesting Oops. mechanics going on. There are so many moving parts at all times throughout that game. You know, It's like, just such, like, an intricately designed thing. Right. Whereas Ocarina was kind of like huge, open, like you have all these different places. And Majora was kind of like, here are your areas, figure them out, talk to these same people over and over again, change the time, change the days, like whatever. Like, I don't know. I, I, I personally, as the years go on, I have more respect for Majora than Ocarina. I feel the same exact way. I mean, I, I, Majora was always my favorite, but same sort of thing was that I first game I played Zelda was Ocarina of Time, and mm -hmm. I like fell in love. I thought it was, it was incredible. Yeah. I just, I, I devoured it. And Ocarina of Time is an incredible, incredible game. Yeah. The same sort of thing as time goes on. My love for Ocarina, Ocarina you know, it kind of diminishes, but my love for Majora and just how... Even, you know, a game's how old, 19 years old, almost 20 years old, it's still, like, unique and fresh. And, like, the ideas used in that, like, I've never really been able to see any yes. other game that yes. duplicates it in that same vein. Yes. And being so, you know, not to get all emotional and sappy, but, like, it really, it really you know, pulls at the heartstrings. And, really, there's just moments in that game where, like, you just, you feel this sense of doom and yes. just this sense of, you know, everything I do, no matter what. I'm not promoting nihilism. I'm just saying, like, you know, it is like this sort of sense of, man, everything I do is no point. It's just right. going to wash amazing. away anyway. It's amazing. Yeah. The storytelling like game to do that. The storytelling yeah. in that game, I think, completely surpasses Ocarina. And Ocarina has great moments, especially Temple of Time, mm -hmm. where you come out and the whole world has changed and oh, there's yeah. zombies and stuff. Like, there are moments, but I think as a, like, cohesive narrative, like an overarching story, I think Majora blows it out of the water, mm -hmm. personally. I mean, like, the amount of interactive characters that you can talk to is is far surpasses that as well. And right. they all have something interesting and actually important that's the thing. to say. Yeah, you know? that's like, the thing. Yeah. That, that distinguishes it for me. Now, I know, again, we're talking about, when we're talking about personal taste, I, I, how many times do I have to say, I like a game that's trying something new and, and really messing around with your ideas of mm -hmm. what this game is. And because it came out so soon after Ocarina, it was like so weird where it was like, you know, I thought I knew what, what a Zelda game was. I played 60 hours of Ocarina of Time and, and beat it and it was great. But it's like the the reason I want to put Majora ahead of it is because there are, there are probably three games in the world that for me are like every little thing... I know every bit about this game because it's so nostalgic and Ocarina is one of those games. Mm -hmm. So for me to still say Majora, I, I, I think is a better game in my heart is, is what's telling, you know, I, mm -hmm. I just say the same thing about Yoshi's Island right. and Mega Man two. It's like those three games. I could, I could tell you how to do every little thing. Yeah. I could tell you every noise. I, I know every piece of music, like Ocarina is that mm -hmm. I know everything about that game. I have played it so many times. It's my dad's favorite game. It's my sister's favorite game. Like, we played that game nonstop when I was young. So I know this game in and out. But when you look at it through a critical lens and you're looking at it as a, like, I love the subversion of expectations that Majora does. Mm -hmm. And it's just such a unique experience that I just, I have a hard time putting Ocarina above it, even though I think most people in the world would put Ocarina above it. Some people will say Ocarina of Time is the greatest, like, game. Yeah. And I think it's an amazing game, but... For me, I have more fondness for Majora because it's more interesting and it makes you think more in in multiple ways in right. in in its storytelling and in its mechanics. It makes you think. More. I think that's I think you hit the nail on the head. For me personally, it's just it is. I mean, as much as I love Ocarina, same sort of thing. And Ocarina has its moments. Majora was always more interesting to me. It was just every yeah. every place you go to, every character you meet, there was just some sort of you just gravitated 
towards everything because yeah. there was something very real and like human about all the characters even just you know one of the the guys the, the doku king you know like his daughter went missing and you know things like that that like you know when you're a kid playing it you just like oh wow like you know mm-hmm. kind of opened it kind of opens you up to actual uh serious things and yeah, it is yeah. awesome absolutely so i yeah. think consensus is we're doing majora yeah. over ocarina but that doesn't mean that both of these games can't be top three, top five, whatever. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But it's just, I think, in the end, we're going to be putting Majora above Ocarina, and I know that's that's controversial as well. But Listen, like Suck I said, it. on a we're personal level... We're like I, Che Guevara. Yeah. We're just changing things up. <laughs> on a personal level, I lock, video like Ocarina better, but I, I have no qualms with saying that Majora is a better game. Mm. You know? Because yeah, I but, agree with every single thing you're saying. Like, it, it's so intricate and so interesting and... Uh, looking right. back on it in hindsight, and they're you're like, yeah, "Damn, that right. game was so doing good. so many things yeah. that has never been done before." It you was kind of like it, uh, ahead of its time, at the, way ahead of its coming time, yeah. right after and it's, Ocarina. And you know, you like know? it still is. Seriously, I mean, yeah. now we have like the nice indie burst where there's a lot of games like, dealing this, with yeah, certain but themes, this but plays but, in those themes yeah. that nothing ever touched at mm-hmm. that time. Yeah. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, and that's why I respect it so much. But also, I get what you're saying. Like, nostalgia is a powerful thing. Oh yeah. But I've done. I purposefully am like. I'm not like I can't discount nostalgia, but over the years when I've gone back and played these games, I've I've taken I've made a point to be like, let me see how good this game actually is, mm-hmm. and not how good is it in my mind. And uh, don't play Earthworm Jim again, guys, because it's it's not good. <laughs> but goddamn, I but love I love Earthworm, Earthworm Jim. Jim is great. <laughs> I love that game, and I was like, I just got to go back and see if it was as good as I remember, and it's so bad. But Earthworm Jim too. <laughs> Oh, we're, we're playing that in one That's of our funny. videos. Yeah, we'll Earthworm. see. I have we'll see. the Earthworm Jim. Um, Toe Jam and Earl, remember? Toe, Toe Jam and Earl. Yeah. Toe Jam and Earl holds up, I will <laughs> say. Toe isn't Jam and Earl's Isn't a there game. a new one coming out? Yeah, I think they it already came out. It, yeah. it came out this year, yeah. Anyway, I don't want to get on that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I just wanted to give you an example of what I'm talking about. Yeah, like, yeah. I really go back to these games as like, is this as good as I remember it? Or was it good because it came out in that time and there wasn't much like it? Yeah. So the games that are truly great in my mind are the ones that you go back to and you're like, this is still an amazing game. And I think, of course, you could say that about Ocarina, but when you compare Ocarina to Majora now, yeah. if you were to play both back-to-back, I think somebody with my, like, how I view things and, and my taste in, in media in general, there's no comparison to me. And that's how I agree with that. So let's put Majora above Ocarina, but... We don't know where those are going to land. Okay. We just know they're going. Yeah. Majora is going to be higher than Ocarina. Um, Let's talk about. I think the original Zelda. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be a hard one for me because I know you guys are not as as fond of it as I am. I'm not. I'm not suggesting you don't like the game, but I'm saying like for me that game is still such a like. If that game came out this year. I'd be like, this is an awesome indie roguelike. I love this game. It's mm-hmm. amazing. Like, it is that good of a game. Yeah, I completely yeah. agree with you. It is that good. It would of be a game. the indie game of the year. 100%. Yeah, yeah, you know definitely. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it, it it has that quality to it, and it's so far and ahead of its time. Like, that's what I, that's what I really really love about that game. But, you know, I understand. It, we're not talking number one, number two, number three for that. But, you know, I could definitely see it being top five. You know, sitting on a four or five spot. Mm-hmm. But, you know. I understand it's not, especially when we're talking about, we're talking about Majora, we're talking about Breath of the Wild, we're talking about Link to the Past. Like I, I, I know, I know, it's not, it's not gonna be up there, up there. You know, in my heart, it's top three, but I think for us, really. So you put it above Breath of the Wild, Majora. No, uh, I would put it number three behind those two. Really? <laughs> more, more than Link to the Past. More than yeah. Link to the Past. Really? Okay. Yeah. Um. So when we talk about Link. <laughs> <laughs> you happen to use two two like, bad examples. You like na- you like nailed it right on the head there. And you're like, no, absolutely not. Just shot that right down. Um, but yeah, you know what the thing is? It's it's um, you know, a- a- everyone has personal taste. This happens to be like games that I like to play today that come out today are like Zelda, Legend of Zelda. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like. My tastes are the same as when that that game came out 30 years ago. You know what I'm saying? And I still like those kind of games. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it, you're looking at a game like Binding of Isaac or something like that or a, you know, Enter the Gungeon like roguelike, run-based, nuclear throne. Those games are Legend of Zelda. Yeah. Like that's what that is. And 
I just love it so much. But I understand it's not it's not gonna hang at the top top like I have it. I mean, I have it here because it was chronological. But let's put it below Ocarina right now, and we'll see what happens there. Um, yeah. So obviously, we're saying you brought up Legend of Zelda. We're talking about Link to the Past. I think. As a group, we would say Link to the Past is should be higher than the original The Legend of Zelda, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You agree with that? I totally agree. Yeah. Uh, and again, it's you wouldn't have it's one of those things. You can't do that though cuz you know, it's it's hard to I mean, you wouldn't have any of them without the first one. Right. You know, you, yeah. you can't really do that. Yeah. I, I get what you're saying, but you know, obviously Link to the Past plays off of the original Zelda right. in its themes and and story anyway, mm-hmm. but you know, and, and the characters you meet are like, you know, throw well, that's, And that's honestly, I think where, you know, the Zelda series really, really kind of branched off in that where the characters became, you know, even more. I mean, sure, you know, there was characters in, in the other games, but this is where you know, each character had like their own kind of story and their own yeah. sort of the towns became more of like a kind of living, breathing, you know, entity and stuff like that. And yeah. that's for me why Link to the Past would be. 100%. And, and it was, so it borrowed a lot from like RPGs of the time mm-hmm. where it was like, okay. We want to make a game like the original Zelda, but we're going to make it with a story and characters and dialogue and, and little side things very you can do. Yeah, yeah it, it, it was doing something very interesting where it was kind of marrying RPG, like Final Fantasy-like mm-hmm. stuff with that kind of gameplay from the original. And obviously they had a lot of twists on it. They had, you know, different items you can use and stuff like 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 they adapted it a lot, but... You know that's that's what it was trying to do, and I think it did it perfectly. Link to the Past is one of the most perfect video games of all time. Like mm-hmm. it's amazing. Um, so we'll we'll leave that near the top. We'll bring the original Legend of, Legend of Zelda down a little bit. Um, I still am, th- am saying I love Link's Awakening, but I still think when we're talking about these upper upper echelon, I think a Link's Awakening is. I'm, I'm not saying it's bottom tier, but I don't think it's one, two, three. No, I agree. Because now talking about all these other games, I'm like, oh man, this game. I'm, you know, I'm sitting here trying to figure out where I'm going to put Wind Waker in my head. Oh, yeah, yeah, we can talk about Wind well, Waker. Well, that's what okay. we're going to get into yeah. right now. But I'm just, I'm just uh, temporarily putting um, Link's Awakening below the original Zelda right now, okay. just, just in that area. So, the two that we haven't talked about are Breath of the Wild and Wind Waker. Okay. Um, horrible, horrible, horrible games. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely terrible. Um, I've talked a lot about Wind Waker in the past because I, it's definitely one of my favorites. Um, I love the exploration on the boat. I love the map system, um, the characters, the music. Like it was just such a whimsical, like strange game. All the pirate stuff. Mm-hmm. Like there's so much to love about this game. And I, I played it. You it, have a grandma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I played it recently. It came. They did the remake on Wii U. Um, which is just a oh, perfect so version good. of that oh, it's because incredible. they you made it a map on the yeah, yeah it's it's awesome um so if if you want to replay wind waker and you have a wii u that's that's the way to do it it's yeah. it's, it's awesome they up, updated the graphics they didn't do anything crazy with them they just kind of polished them up a little bit and then they yeah it's not like they were going for photorealism with the game anyway so it's right. just it just looks sharper nicer yeah, yeah sharper yeah but yeah wind waker is is a very very unique one of these because of the boat stuff that's the main thing you know you change the direction of the wind with the wind waker obviously and you're sailing around Mm -hmm. exploring these different islands you know doing little side quests for people and stuff like i think it's an awesome game um i don't know where you guys think it fits on here um but wind waker for me would be like top three like i love i loved wind waker so much really really good you know i love that it's like it's it wasn't just a hook shot it was a grappling hook that like you throw it up it, it yeah so like around like it was it, yeah it was just like so cool i one of my favorite absolute favorite things about the game is when you're attacking an enemy and it's like the music goes with it and it's like new 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 and oh, it's like yeah. louder <laughs> like oh it's so freaking good um in that aspect i absolutely adore games to where it makes me pull out a notepad mm-hmm. and i'm like all right i gotta write this down because i'm gonna forget it later uh-huh. we're, we're, the, the world just has so much in it but that's what it is it's that, like i'm playing through the yeah i'm playing oh, through the witness no. right now and that's another game where it's like i'm writing shit down on the side yeah. it's like i adore games like that because it's it makes you sit down and think you're not just mindlessly sitting there and playing a game mm-hmm. you know and add the story to it which i mean the story was good um 
for I the just, most part. But then there were moments like we were talking earlier about that moment where you're going down underneath the water, and then you're like, "Oh, that's yeah, one of the okay. top, in my opinion, one of the top moments in yeah. any of these games mm-hmm. is it, just seeing that. Like it, it's just such an interesting concept that they like, sh- they, they like throw in your face and then never talk about. You right, know, what yeah. I mean? like it's just so good. And then I, more like when we talk about these Zelda games. Not many of them have like a really strong overarching narrative, right? Right. It's mostly characters and themes, mm-hmm. right? And I think Wind Waker shines in those areas because you have the I forget her name, but the Me- pirate queen or oh, whatever. Te- Tetra? No, Tetra. Tetra. Is Tetra. No, that's her name, Tetra. And I, I don't know the sister's name, but I think she was just sister. Tetra. Huh? And then the Oy! or whatever she says, yeah, saying. the red lion or whatever the gold what Queen, was uh, king of red lions boat, yeah. yeah, like just so awesome mm-hmm. these characters and even just to say you know you got Medley and Matcar, you got yeah. Medley the duck oh. girl and then Matcar the little you know it's, uh, the Korok, like, yeah, it is it just so a like joy to play, like yeah. an awesome awesome game, and it, it it feels really good to play. It, you know the graphics still hold up super well, like it's beautiful mm-hmm. with that cel shaded look. Um, yeah, I, I don't really have a bad thing to say about this game and I could definitely see it be near the top of this list. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm with you on that. And really just for what is Zelda game for when I think of Zelda, I think of like adventure and exploring and that yep. game just has yep. that in spades it, yeah. where like you just, I'm on a boat. I'm going to go, I can just go anywhere yeah. I want. I'm going this Island. I can go on this Island. Oh, I wonder if this Island has something. Oh my gosh, it does. Like, you I know, mean, it just, it gave me such a nostalgic feel for the original legend of Zelda because mm-hmm. whereas you're not. You're in the 3D space, but you open up the map and it's still broken down into those little squares, Yeah, you know? And mm-hmm. it's like, it's just in a 3D space. That's it, you know? But at the same time, you're like, yeah, awesome. It's yep. so good. <laughs> it, yep. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's excellent. Yeah. Let's put it near the top for now. Yeah, yeah I'm fine with and that. And then we can think about it. Um, talk about the elephant in the room, Breath of the Wild. Still horrible. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, one of the greatest games of all time. It's, it's so- yeah. It's hard. It's hard for me to talk about, and it's been over a year now. I have some distance from it. You have some feelings you didn't want to talk about. No, I now I feel more comfortable talking. <laughs> oh, about Oh, you them. said. Oh, yes. you said like you didn't want to talk about it. You seem like you went through like a bad breakup with it. Or <laughs> what something. did I say? I don't yeah. want to talk about it. <laughs> You're just like I have a hard time talking about it. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe it's got been a year. <laughs> you know what it is. Listen, <laughs> the thing about it is, it's a very divisive game. It done you wrong. It's a very divisive. One hundred percent. Some people hate it. And some people love it. I know. A lot of people hate it. And, and for I, me, it's one of my favorite games of all time. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's the number one Zelda game. And I'm not saying it has to be number one on this list, but it has to be up there. Yeah. Because this game is just such a unique experience and such a brilliant... It's such a distillation of what a Zelda game is. And that's what people don't get is... When I, talk, when I have this discussion with people about Breath of the Wild and they're like, oh, it's just not... A, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel like a Zelda game to me. I'm like it is the quintessential Zelda it's, it's game. What I, I don't because understand. Yeah, it is exploration and secrets around every corner, and surprising ways to, to solve puzzles. Yeah. It's it that is what this game is, and all the little things around the edges that bother people are completely ancillary. You know what I mean? Like it nails what it is doing so supremely. With the map system, you're marking different things. You're like, oh, I saw something cool over here. Let me put something down. So that I know where to go, and, and I can mark what that is. You're an explorer. That's exactly. You're a cartographer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you are. It is just the if to me it is Zelda one today. That is what that game is. It is like you are every around every corner. There's something different going on. Something surprising. And every time I went and searched deeply. Mm-hmm. There is something rewarding at the Ex- end. That's exactly. There's a mountain up there. I'm like, I want to see if I can climb uh-huh. that mountain. You get there. There's a chest at the top with something interesting in it. It's like the the amount of detail and love and care put into that game is like unparalleled. That's why I think like you see. It's funny that we talk about so the original Zelda, Wind Waker to this. It's like those three games are so intimately tied as like exploration based. Zelda games, yeah, where some of them become some of these games become a little bit more linear. And I'm not saying they're always worse for it because we look at Majora's, and not that that's a linear game, but that's not really a exploration game, right? But that doesn't mean it's a bad game or a worse game. It's just 
this through line. That's why I never understood why people say like, oh, Breath of the Wild is a, a good game, but it's not a Zelda game. It's like, have you played these games? Because I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, like, I think a lot of people, uh, you know, it's a lot of people complain that this Zelda game doesn't have like a very, you know, great story or narrative. But really, no Zelda game really has. Like, that's, that's not that's why you play these yeah. these games. I mean... Again, I love Majora's Mask and Link's Awakening, and I, I will point to this. But the, those are the two outliers, right? Though. That yeah. people freak out about. Yeah. It's, it's like it's such a funny thing where you know. Yes. I feel like the same people that it, it is strange. It's like a Jekyll and Hyde. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know. But anyway, it, it, and no disrespect to anybody that doesn't like bre- these, you know, Breath of the Wild or anything like that. I just, yeah, I think. Yeah. No, I feel the like, way, and it's like, yeah, it doesn't have a super cohesive story. But when I think about Breath of the Wild, even though it is still fresh in our minds, I don't think about the story notes i think about oh i remember when i went into that one cave yes. and I'm like this it's your you know, like, story exactly you're it's, nobody it's, it's, nobody plays this game the same it's your experience that is the substitute for the story in this game yeah you, you do not need a a to b to c story in every game and and it drives me nuts when people think that you need that in every game there are certain games where it works perfectly in it we talked about majora and Link's awakening those games are their mainline story is what is the main draw right yes this isn't that and that's okay and it's totally okay <laughs> yeah. and seriously that sense of adventure we're talking about wind waker yeah. again this just even to the to like the, you said oh, everywhere yeah. you go yeah. you're like well, oh, okay let's go there and let's you go, go to a new shrine and it's some brand new unique puzzle you've never seen before yep. or, or you're solving things in, in strange ways you're like you know doing the physics thing on it and hitting it with that with a hammer like hitting it with your sword yeah, and then you jumping on pop- and like there's so many different. You really things. solve can solve a puzzle like seventeen so different, different ways, ways yeah. Yeah, yeah. which is really you know. I don't know how many times I've I've used this example, but it's like there was one where you had to get lightning or like electricity into the door switch, and I couldn't figure out how to turn them the right way. So I laid down a bunch of metal objects in a line and linked it like yeah. a circuit, and it worked. You know what it's I'm saying? Incredible. Like, it was just those systems. It, it in is that just game a just, genius, yeah. genius game, and. For me, like I said, this this game, like like I said, it's only been a year, but it flirts with like best, favorite game of all time for me. So I, I of course would want would say this is number one, but I think it's got to be up there at the very least, and then we can have that conversation. I agree. I agree. I I would put it above Wind Waker. Yeah. Um, on a personal list. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. For me personally, it's I I have a hard time between Majora's and and Breath of the Wild. Those two are like constantly teetering. Um, but for diff- but for that's the thing for different reasons. Yeah. All right, what do we, yeah. what do we have at the moment here? So right now this is just you know what we have currently. We have Breath of the Wild, Wind Waker, a Link to the Past, Majora's Mask, Ocarina of Time, Legend of Zelda, Link's Awakening, Link Between Worlds, Skyward Sword, and Minish Cap. Um, the only thing I would say so for here, I would put Majora above Wind Waker personally. Or at least, I don't know. The, the problem is, Link to the Past should be around that area, in mm-hmm. my opinion. But I I have a tough time seeing Wind Waker above Majora. I love Same. Wind Waker. So swap those two is what you're looking at. So I'm saying maybe swap those two, but you know, are we cool with a Link to the Past being there? Or do we want a Link to the Past fourth or second? Or that's what I'm asking. It's like... So let's just let's look at two, three, four, right? We have Wind Waker, Link to the Past, Majora's Mask. Like for me, so personally. I would say Majora is two, in my opinion. Yeah, and I'm then for that, and then are we saying Wind Waker above Link to the Past or below Link to the Past? It's so interesting because you got you know you got a two D game and a three D game. I think Wind Waker, that sense of exploration. Ah, that's tough because then Link to the Past is just such a game. <laughs> it's just so much fun. <laughs> that game is just so much fun. My fa- I just and wanted- is Ocarina number five an issue for anyone? That's no. the other. That's what I'm saying. Like, as much as I love, I have no problem with the one two right now. I think, I, I do think a link to the past might surpass Wind Waker. Wind Waker. Okay. As much as I love Wind Waker, a link to the past, what it did, as we were talking before about what it did after. Coming back to the same realm as the original Legend of Zelda game, yeah, and just making it so much better with the uh, with those extra elements and stuff like that, yeah. It it was it does what Wind Waker did, but it did it first, mm-hmm. kind of. Um, mm-hmm. that's kind of how I feel about it. And uh, all right, I I mean I would take either of those at number three 
And number four, I just feel like on our list, A Link to the Past is probably a better number three. Interesting how our list, like we have, I think we have Ocarina very, very low than the most people. Than, yeah. mo- than most people is do we do we do we think? Well, that's Link what to I was going to say. So th- there's a combination of things here. So number one, we have the original at number six. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which it like irks me, but I I could you know I'm looking at one through five and I get it. But man, not having a top five hurts. Oh, is there any games that you would? argue well that's the question i mean than? for us as a whole you know I, we're not taking wind waker off the top five we're not taking ocarina right no so it's hard to you know what's coming off yeah yeah I, you, you know if it was if it was me like i said it would be breath of the wild majora and then Legend the original of Zelda, oh, personally okay. and then you probably have wind waker and then link to the past but I like the way this list looks. I'm not, I'm not, you know, shutting it down or anything. It's just uh, have it, having it just below top five just kind of hurts. I don't know why. So what, would you switch it with Ocarina right now? Yeah, but that's also hard to do, right? Yeah. It's, you know, as as a whole for the, for us as a group. I don't know. What do you guys think? I feel like we have a top ten that could shift it. Depending on how we're That's feeling I mean, that if day, we did this, le- if we did this <laughs> you know, next week, it would be like, it would be completely different, right? You know. Also, we need to talk about. So we already kind of said Majora is going above Link to the Past and Wind Waker. We said that, right? Yeah. Are we comfortable with That's that? That's how I yeah, personally yeah, yeah. feel. So, but then the real question is: Breath of We have Breath of Wild at number one. Yeah, how do we feel about Breath of the Wild being number one? Oh, I'm fine with that. <laughs> I have no problem with that. Well, I'd, that was again, easy. Majora's right. Mask, Breath of the Wild with you. How do you feel about it? Majora's Mask is my f- my favorite Zelda game. Majora's Mask is like personally one of my my favorite games ever, top three. Mm-hmm. But Breath of the Wild as a game, as a you know, and you can't you can't be objective. But like as as a whole cohesive adventure exploration, what a Zelda game is, yeah. Breath of the Wild was such a breath of fresh air that I just. All right, like, how many puns can we fit into this? Because you said diminish <laughs> before, ting, ting, and ting, I wanted ting, to ting, say ting, diminish ting. cap. <laughs> <laughs> just tally them up. Um, I don't know. It's interesting. I haven't played Majora's Mask in maybe two, three years. No, well, actually, that's not true. When did when did Breath <laughs> of the Wild come out? 2017. Last year, like a, almost a little less than a year. No, 2017. About oh, two years. Two yeah, years it ago. was. It was. It was. It was Jeez. Oh my it god! It came out in wow. early Switch. Time Switch flies. Two years ago. Yeah. All right. So almost now, now I feel years, better yeah. about saying that Breath so of the Wild is my favorite. I'm, I might have put. <laughs> I probably played Majora's maybe two, three years before that last time. All right, so five years ago, playthrough about five saying. years ago, and but I just there's still so many moments that I can, I can the, like point the, to. Us having this conversation just wants me to replay. It wants to, makes yeah, me right. want to replay Majora it's just, so bad. It's so fantastic. <laughs> um, I remember get, becoming the Goron for the when you go uh, up into the ice and you mm-hmm. gotta chase that guy and yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. faster you go, the spikes come out and mm-hmm. shit. But that's what I mean. Like those moments were like you never forget that. Even so. even him, like his like backstory, how he was like a failed like leader and like he became yeah. a ghost. He got the giant. Him. What does he have a scar on his chest? Yeah, whatever, you know, yeah. and just how he's just like he's completely like distraught and and that's why well, he's the way dead. He's, well, he's dead. But he's, okay, <laughs> he's dead and distraught. <laughs> you could be both. <laughs> be both at the same time. That's fine. Um, but like that, and Breath of the Wild doesn't have. That, you know, so I mean, I, I can't, it's, you know, it's, it's a seesaw. You know, what I, I could say is better. Majora's my personal favorite for those moments, but that's also what I go to games for is those sort of like, mm-hmm. you know, tug yeah. at the, you know, give me something to kind of think about when I turn the game off. Right. Having said that, though, when it comes to exploration and what I would say a Zelda game is, Breath of the Wild, you know, knocks that one out of the. Yeah. I do like park. looking at these top four and going, oh, well, that was totally different at the time. Oh, that was totally different at the time. Mm-hmm. Oh, that one was totally so, different. So, all right. So, you know, can we just agree <laughs> that Legend of Zelda is like a groundbreaker? Like, seriously? Like, as, yeah, a, as right. a franchise? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, when you <laughs> franchise have 10 anyway, but I'm saying if you put this list against, you know, any other franchise, I, I don't know that any other, I don't know that even Mario tops it. Yeah. You know, it's like, this is really. You go, Nintendo. You well, go. Yeah. Go, Nintendo. <laughs> they have such a good history of just. <laughs> so, is that our list? I think that's our list. What do you think? Um, um you think it's good in yeah, this order? I'm saying. Should I read it and we make sure it sounds yeah. good? Yeah. All right. So we have number ten, Minish Cap. Number nine, Skyward Sword. Number eight, Link Between Worlds. Number seven, Link's Awakening. Number six, Legend of Zelda. Number five, <laughs> Ocarina of Time. 
so hesitant. Number four, <laughs> Wind Waker. Number three, A Link to the Past. Number two, Majora's Mask. Number one, Breath of the Wild. Wow. How does it sound? Set in stone for me. Yeah. Is there anything? I know, Dan, The Legend of Zelda really upsets you. <laughs> but it's such a personal thing. Though. These games just upset yeah. you. They're very upsetting. <laughs> Um, it's just too much of a personal thing. I I couldn't imagine on our list taking Ocarina down to put Legend of Zelda up. I feel like there was a time though that Link to the Past was like your favorite game. I feel like when we first started hanging out, you were like Link to the Past. That's it. It's just such an easy one to recommend. It's like such a amazing game that Mm -hmm. it's like if you like games, play Play that. (laughs) Like I can't. I would not (laughs) recommend Majora's Mask to everyone. Yeah, I wouldn't. True. true. So it's a hard. You know, it's like a. Would you recommend Breath of the Wild to everyone? No, I wouldn't. Because I know that people actually actively dislike that game. Actively dislike it. Actively dislike it. As opposed to passively disliking it. Ralph actively dislikes Breath of the Wild. Hi, Ralph. Yes. Ralph, you listening? Sorry, yeah. Ralph. Um, but the whole argument is that there are no, like, the, the main dungeons in Breath of the Wild, which are the big, big, you know, things, the Divine Beasts or whatever. That's what it called. Right? <laughs> divine yeah. Beasts. They're not very good. No. But and I would agree, but that's you're missing the point of the game then. Yeah, the game is pure, in my opinion, exploration. And guess what? Those are so fucking cool to find in the world, and like see across the map. Be like, what the hell is that? And that's what the game's about. Mm-hmm. Well, even just you guys, when you find your first dragon, and you're just like, yeah, yeah. What? what do you do with this thing? What is that? You Everything. Know what I mean? like, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. it is just. No, I agree with you because you could look at it from the completely opposite side of the map and be like, what is that little dot over there yeah. shaped like a bird? And yeah. you're like. I can get to that. All right. You know, like, no. That's what, exactly. And I don't want to, I mean, that's what, yeah. that's what they open their game with, you know? They're right. like, look, you can look over there and you can go there. Right. But, uh, but yeah. Because, you know, it's like, I don't know. It's just fantastic. It's just perfect. And, you know, and, and you can, you can look at it and just be like, well, you know, I could, I could beat this game in two hours. All I gotta do is, you know, fight these four bosses or not even, you can go and just fight Ganon. You can, yeah. You can do that. Mm. But the time that I've put into that game with, you know, ninety percent of it was just oh, I'm just gonna go over here and see what what this is, or mm-hmm. I'm just gonna go explore. Yeah. And like that is just like you said, those moments, and it's different for everybody. And and that to, that's to me what joy this video game brings is just I'm just gonna go and do whatever I want. And now they're following it up with a dancing game. Boom. <laughs> hey, <laughs> no, don't, don't disparage <laughs> that. Crypt of the Necro Dancer was amazing. No, I love that they're giving us all this little extra Zelda stuff. It, yes. You know, like. How are they going to follow this up? Though? How are they going to follow Breath of the Wild? Well? This remake of uh, Link's, Awakening. Link's Awakening. That's true. Coming out later this well, year. You answered that for me. Thank Which you. looks <laughs> incredible. <laughs> uh, all right. So I think that's going to do it for us, guys. That's the that's the Circle Back Gaming's uh, top 10 Zelda games. Yeah. I'm going to read them again. 10 to, not, 10 to 1. We have number 10, Minish Cap. Number 9, Skyward Sword. Number 8, Link Between Worlds. Number seven, Link's Awakening. Number six, The Legend of Zelda. Number five, Ocarina of Time. Number four, Wind Waker. Number three, A Link to the Past. Number two, Majora's Mask. Number one, Breath of the Wild. Thanks, guys, for being here. We all know the real winner was Wanda Gamelon. It's time to go fight Ganon. Uh, I'm going to do a little, little promotional thing for us real quick. Um, we are doing a lot of new video stuff, so please check out our YouTube at circle back gaming. Um, we, so we're going to start a few new series. Um, I'm not going to say exactly what they are, but one thing I will say is one of them is full playthrough of Sekiro shadows die twice featuring Shelby. Oh yeah. Who's yeah, never, Shelby. he's never played a, uh, from software game before and I'm going to be coaching him. So look for Sekiro Shelby dies twice <laughs> and, Co- thrice. and thrice <laughs> and thrice and forever more. But thrice. <laughs> uh, but so that's one little taste for you, but we're going to be start, we're going to start doing, uh, one different video a week and they're going to be recurring series every month. Um, Check out the YouTube channel. Uh, there's some really exciting stuff coming there. So until next time, peace. Thank you, everybody. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for watching and or listening. Just here to remind you that you can find us by searching for Circleback Podcast or Circleback Gaming 
on any of these podcast services. Anchor, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, Pocket Casts, Radio Public, or Stitcher. My God, I'm out of breath because of all these podcast services. But you can find us anywhere there. Also, you can find us our video version on YouTube by searching Circle Back Podcast or Circle Back Gaming uh, and the rest of the videos we do. Thanks, guys.